Hi, this is Mia, and I am checking in with you because I have my basic science boards on Tuesday. Today is Sunday. It's about going on 1.30 where I live on um, Sunday, so I have class tomorrow and clinic shift, a four-hour clinic shift. I am really freaking out. Everyone is like, dude, you have a real problem with your attitude. They didn't say it to me like that. They're like, you're thinking negative, you know, that's no way to go and do a test. But I mean, realistic, I'm like, I have a lot that I am supposed to be studying between now and then. I have read like 170 pages of a novel in the past two days. What? It was so easy to read. Oh, let's take a five minute break. I was like reading like a crazy, like speed reading this book, literally. I'm like, how come I didn't go through 170 pages of my notes? So today I had felt extremely guilty about missing the annual church picnic. And I will tell the truth, I'm telling the world that I have extreme guilt. I had another uh, community, a local community fellowship that had another community picnic, um, a yearly picnic on the 4th of July. I also missed that, both of them for the first time. I've been going to them for 10 years, uh, nine Maybe one of them was nine or eight or nine years. The other one was ten years straight. Um, in fact, I think it, it had been ten years. Yeah, nine to ten years for both of them. And I am really freaking out right now. Um, I feel extreme amount of, of stress. I feel extreme amount of guilt. I had class last Saturday, uh, last Sunday. I missed church because I was at school. I live far away. I used to live in a place where if I was sick or something... I mean, I landed it one time. I asked somebody to take my kid to church. I think me and my son were sick, and I asked them to take my daughter to church because they live, like, you know, 20 blocks from where I lived. And I still feel like I'm being inconsiderate. I'm like, oh, my gosh, we went to church every day. We went to church every Wednesday. We went to church every whatever. If they had Saturday stuff, if they had Friday stuff, if they had Thursday stuff, if they had Monday stuff, I was at every one of them. So I have this extreme guilt, and I'm sitting here like, I hear comments towards me and towards other people like my decisions that I make are poor and that the racism that I felt is not real when everyone is individual even some of the same race may have different experiences and it also depends where you live and what neighborhood you live it also depends on your education it can and I've even had issues with blacks telling me things about the way I speak or the way that I dress or the fact that I go to college and take you know, at the time, take science classes. I just wanted to share with you, I had been praying, I've been watch, I've been listening to a video, I missed eight hours of last weekend's class, I missed over eight hours of the class, because I had two clinic shifts. And this is a review for biochem, and it took a big chunk out of everything. So I was listening to that, I think I'm going through a three hour set right now, <clears throat> the next day she missed 30 minutes and nobody would record for me, I was so mad. I was trying to get someone to record on a phone or something. Like, could someone, like, split it up? So you record ten minutes? I just, I don't know. But I was like, you know what, whatever. I don't have time to deal with this. I don't have time to go back and, like, round up all these people and put stuff on my computer anyway that I may not be able to find. So, I just wanted to say right now, I was praying, and God had told me, reminded me that I had asked many times of church and different thing, different places, you know that there are people that, let me tell you this, I got, like, a minute and 20 seconds that they have jobs where they need to work on Sunday. And as a student, my job is either class on Sundays or or there's seriously like a test early in the morning that I'm not prepared for. I'm raising my kids alone. <clears throat> you know, I'm driving, commuting all over the place. That takes hours, hours out of your week. For someone who doesn't have to do that, has that many more hours to study for stuff and that many more hours to sleep. And God had revealed to me and told me, go make a video right now and don't, there's other people out there that have the same question. I have the same question about tithing and offering. Oh, if I borrow money from my school, do I need to tithe it? And there was no answer from anyone, from like, you know, the three to four people that I asked that were leaders. Nobody could tell me. And it's like, I really want, I mean, if you don't know the answer, I want someone to pray with me about it. So God had revealed, what if you worked, you're a single parent, what if you worked on Sunday? And I mean, not even rent, but I could be even rent. But what if it was like, you have to pay your mortgage. Okay, my college loan, I could have bought a house for $250,000. let us just put it that way. Maybe $230,000, depending. I don't, I don't like to look closely at the numbers. God had revealed to me, 
what if you're the primary breadwinner in your family? And the, in the most part of the people that I know that are Christians, their primary breadwinner is a male. And it is a male <coughs> husband-wife household, some with kids, some without. Um, for me, there's not very many people that I know that are single parents. And a lot of the single, especially moms from the church, from the church I go to, I can't talk about other ones. There have been a couple. One is now married. Another one I hardly see. And I, I talk to her, and it's like, dude, she's like, oh, my gosh, I have class. I have not class. I have work seven days a week. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I know how she feels. And I kind of laugh when she tells me this. But I'm like, why Why did we get stuck with this type of schedule, you know? Um, I just wanted to say right now, put this scenario on somebody else. And like I said, part of the reason I'm sharing this is because God told me. And part of the reason is I've been getting a lot of comments told to me about I'm not behaving right. Or they may be general comments. Um, but it's like concerning things that I have recently done. And some of it's like, if you don't attend, you're going to be, pretty much, the devil's going to kill your entire family. Like, they don't use those words, but they use similar words. It's like, you're going down. If if you don't come regularly, your family is not going to be prayed for regularly. You're not part of this, like, protective layer of fellowship. And I'm sitting here, every, every week I have class, every week that I'm like, oh my gosh, if I don't pass this test, oh my gosh, if I don't do this, I'm not going to be able to pay my loans back, I'm going to get kicked out of school. I already got a warning from school. And part of this issue was dealing with racism and was dealing with changed grades, messed up grades. There was all kinds of issues with the grades. There was like, there was compounded issues with the grades. And it ended up with me being like, with all the issues, like, dealing with all the issues, I would have failed out all every other class the next term. I said, forget it. Let them say what they want to say. I am done. If they want me to retake the class, then I will do it because at the rate I'm going trying to fight for what was right, I would have failed everything else messing with these people and sitting all this time in their office like, oh, peace, love, happiness, too bad. We're not going to help you. We don't care. Oh, we lost your test and we don't care that we don't want, we don't even want to find it. Like, we're too busy because we're like, you know, we got to like do yoga or something and like ride our bikes and like play in a band and stuff and like our kids that are like 25 they need help getting gas and they're calling right now I'm sorry I can't talk to you like this is stuff I was getting I don't have time for this and my own kids are sitting in daycare not being cared for because there's like 100 kids and like 4 teachers I think that ratio is an accurate one I think you can have like 30, 25, 30 kids <laughs> anyways it doesn't matter um I was supposed to stop this at 5, and it's way more than 5. I just wanted to say right now, I am I am freaking out. I've been crying. I feel like God's like, dude, you got to do your work. you got to take care of your kids. You've got to take care of your family. You've got to take care of your house. Anything, it's like your level right here. Anything that puts a blip on my, on anyone's radar or puts a mark on my progress report for anything, including housing, is going to, it's going to make me go. I mean, if you don't have your grass the right way, if you don't have, if you have cobwebs, if you have too many plants on your porch, they don't like the way your car is parked, they're going to they're gonna put an eviction notice on your door or pre-eviction notice, which I've got many. If they don't like the color of your curtains, you're out of here. You know, one place, if you change the light bulbs, you're going to be evicted. One place, if you don't change the light bulbs, you're not, you're going to be evicted. Like, okay, here's what God's telling me. I know, I'm trying to get the light right. Here's what, here's what God's uh, telling me right now. The scenario is, because no one has answered the question about being a full-time student, especially a medical school student, I don't know any doctors who are um, Christians that I know, like, literally. I don't know any. Um, I mean, I know... Some people that graduate, I don't talk to them. I don't know what their situation is. A lot of them are younger, a lot younger than me, just got married, just had babies. They're just like, they got their mothers and their dads and their brothers and sisters, a whole family. It's a big, one big happy family. Everyone's helping everyone and blah, blah, blah. But right now, if I, let's just say that the scenario, there's a male, head of the household, doesn't matter if he has kids or wife or whatever. He has a job. The boss has strictly said, okay, there's going to be some Sundays where you're going to have to work. And if you don't work, you can go find another job because I have a lot of people that will work on Sundays. And a lot sometimes this can be illegal. 
But it's like, the dude bought a house. He owes 250 grand. He's kind of living paycheck to paycheck. He saves some money, blah, blah, blah. Who cares? If he doesn't pay that money, you know, by the 15th of each month, that house is gone. You know, and some people, though, don't pay for a few months. I don't care. In my book, in my story right now, if he doesn't pay, just like, if I don't pay my rent by the 5th, first of all, I'll get a late charge. Then I'll have so many days to pay it. I think they give you, I don't know if they give you 30 or, I don't know. They got him to the 15th or whatever to pay it with a $50, $60 late charge. And then if you don't pay it by then, then they issue a 30-day eviction notice. And I heard that you don't necessarily have to leave until they take you to court. And then they get a court order to get, get rid of you, change locks or whatever, get, call the sheriff, whatever. I don't want to deal with that. So, there's some men in my church who work on Sunday. It's like, oh, we miss them. Oh, we pray for them. We hope everything is okay. I know it's hard. With this economy, I know they have to pay their bills, they have to pay their mortgage, and, you know, sometimes the wife comes, and on holidays, sometimes he can get time off. Oh, we miss him. It's so sweet that he's able to work and take care of his family. But me, it's always like, oh my gosh, you shouldn't have picked that career choice. You shouldn't have done this. You, you, you messed up. Blah, 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 blah. And you destroy your kid's life because you decided to go to school for medicine. Okay? God planned planted this idea in my life when I was a toddler, literally. I had the toys. I was, like, obsessed with medicine my whole life, including surgeries, which I can do as a naturopath. Minor surgeries, mind you, but still, cutting something off somebody and sewing it back up. Sterile. Sterily, is that a word? I'm just neat. I'm hyper, I guess, because I'm trying to do this really fast. I just want to say right now, God had told me that person is being praised. He's working on Sunday. And I would say, if that was my situation, we understand, we see it a lot. I would, if I was that guy, I would pray, God, please guide me to get a job where the boss lets me take off every Sunday so I can lead my family to the church or go be with other fellows, fellowship with other believers and worship and prayer and hear the message and go to the picnics and stuff. Or, oh, please let my boss understand that this is my faith, and please let my boss understand that this is part of my lifestyle. I, I would pray, prayerfully consider. I'd be like, and I'd also be like, if I was that guy, I'd be like, you know what, God, this, this work is not leading me away from you or your word or the Bible or prayer or Christian music or raising my family or, you know, doing the different things or saying, hey, does this match up with God's will for my life? Or does this match up with, with what my faith, you know, what the Bible tells me to do? Because if it doesn't, you want to just steer far, as far away from, from that as you can. Now, in my situation, I'm a student. I borrowed money. It was my choice. It's not a house. It's like a, almost like a luxury. It's a luxury. I mean, and if I, I should be buying a house. Do you pay $1,200 a month in rent? You could buy a house and like, you could buy it month by month within like, 11 years, <clears throat> 12 years, or something that you get from a short sale or something. In the neighborhood I live in, the, you know, a lot of the houses are up, upwards. Average houses are like 340 grand. <clears throat> but you could get one a little bit smaller, a little bit older with only one bathroom for less than that. In fairly good sized house, you know, I'm talking 1,500 square feet with decent yard. Um, <clears throat> and within 10 minutes, with 7 to 10 minutes from downtown, not in rush hour, 12 minutes in rush hour, um, where I live, it can really be 12 hour, 12 minutes in rush hour, which is kind of convenient when you've got kids in daycare and all over the place. I just want to say, as a student, I haven't got any answers. When I studied for farm and all these different things on Sunday, I even went to see a tutor. I missed church. I felt so guilty like I do right now. And I passed the test. So many times, I failed tests because I said, Oh, well, if I study really hard, get up early, and just ignore things like the dishes, and just get the kids junk food, and not make them stuff from scratch, I have to clean up, and go shopping for it. It's like, I can go to this church event, or this woman's event, for two, three hours. And two, three hours for me, you know, it's like five to six hours. 
It's like I can listen to the recording on the way there. I can keep some flashcards in my purse. I can sit there while I'm eating and chewing and think of like electron transport. You know, I find them like that. But it ends up I eat a bunch of food that I'm allergic to. I get a rash. I get stressed out. I get home. It's six, seven o'clock at night. The kids are starving. You know, by the time I make them food, it's nine forty-five, and I have a test at seven thirty. And it's like, dude, I didn't even touch my notes, and I was supposed to read three hundred pages of notes. So I had learned the insanity definition, doing the same thing over again with and expecting different results. I had learned not to do that. I mean, slow is. I am not. Let's think. Some things I don't always learn the first time around. I have to experiment with things. So I didn't. I said, well, God will bless me because the pastor said that they will bless me because I took time out to do this stuff with God, with God's people, and that way he'll supernaturally allow me to pass that test. And so many times I was had to repeat classes, and I was on the verge of failing classes. I have actually gotten an F, and it was at a level that it was the one I was fighting where stuff disappeared, and the handwritten stuff disappeared, or stuff on the remediation was graded wrong. It wasn't, if I had studied and took the time to deal with this situation, which is work, despite I'm not getting a paycheck and I'm not physically going to a place, I would have had a grade high enough that there would be no doubt, there would be no way for them to fudge the numbers and casually lose part, part of the test. Part of the test is on, it's graded on Scantron, part of it's graded by hand. There would be no way to fudge. And I've, I've had a lot of them fudging stuff. I've had people erasing stuff. Another story. And it's hard, it's even hard that way when you got <coughs> when you do do well, <clears throat> really well. I'm talking nineties, high nineties, and they totally erase it. Or even hundred percent and they decide that we're not gonna give you that high of a score. It's really difficult. One of my teachers the other day that's really she's like, Everything I've seen that I graded from you is like ninety plus and I'm like Really? I, I've seen stuff 90 plus. I've seen stuff being changed. And there's nothing I can do. I tried doing stuff about it. And, there, and there's eraser marks and everything. They're not, and like, you can go in to the administration and be like, look at all these eraser marks on my tests. When it was, uh, and I actually saw the high score before, and they even erased that. So you can see it all. And it's like, too bad we don't have any, any way to help you with this. So we can take a copy and put it in your file, but we don't really want to. So just take it home and leave us alone because we're busy planning our lunch at the newest Thai restaurant. Okay? This is what I hear. Seriously. So, to make things make me not feel so hysterical and crazy, God had revealed to me, listen, you've asked questions, you've been confused about tithing, borrowed money when when you have to pay like 8% interest rate <laughs> on 250 That's way too much. The car I bought, I could have bought cash. I could have paid for my car cash, a new car, for the price it cost me to go to school in one term. This is scary. And a lot of that, the interest is, it's almost like compound interest. It's going out higher and higher and higher. There's no more subsidized loans. It's going through the roof. And I need to pay it. Assume, the day that I'm done with school, boom, I got, a, I got my first bill that month. I cannot get it in my license that month. I have to get it when I pass clinical boards. And I have to pass basic science boards. And that will take... Four months from the date, you have to be paying your loans back for four. So $250,000 on a 10-year loan, is it? 10-year, 10-year. You've got to be paying that back for four months without a job as a naturopath. And that's if things go well. If you don't pass the boards, you have to retake it, or you didn't take the science ones, you're going to be put back another seven months. So you're So seven months plus four months. That's pretty much a little over a year you're going to be set back. Um, so it's scary. It is really scary. I don't want to be, you. I mean, you can't just be like, I'm going to go bankrupt. No, you, I mean, besides paying back your loans and not defaulting on that, you can default on your loans in this in this state and get your license taken away. Then how are you going to work? And not only do you have to pay your loans so you can keep your license, you have to pay, for me, I have to pay for a house for my kids or apartment or I don't care. I live in a studio, whatever. Studios cost more than the rent I pay in, in, uh, in where the place I live now. I have to pay for transportation. I have to pay thousands of dollars for tests and test uh, materials and all that stuff. That's beside the point. So what God revealed to me is 
your college education and loans is like house. And if sometimes you cannot go on Sunday, I mean, if next week would have been great. It would have been the best weekend. It would have been like, I am going, I'm going to go swimming in the river, I'm going to eat whatever I want, blah, 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 despite the fact that I gained 15 pounds. But still, I would have brought all kinds of fruit bowl basket thing with a little cut up watermelon and who, you know, I would have brought some gluten free cookies or something weird, you know, introduce people to. But what I'm saying is, To be irresponsible, and everyone treats me like a child. Everyone thinks I'm an idiot. Everyone thinks, you know how to drive? What? You own a, a cell phone and you have a computer? Oh my gosh. It's like, how in the world are you going to be through school and be a single parent with two kids who are home by themselves and at daycare without a cell phone or computer or, you know. Some people can go without computer and internet. And they spend their time at coffee shops and libraries. How are you to do that when you got to go pick your kids up all over town and daycare and through rush hour? How are you going to sit at the at the library until 10 o'clock at night or 8 o'clock at night when your kids are at home hungry and not being parented and you can't afford a nanny? It's like, you, you got to do what you got to do. And it's unfortunate people dog me for all the stuff that I'm doing wrong. No one said a word about their dad. Their dad is not paying a dime in child support, court ordered. Zero dollars. And they told me I have to pay a lot of money in order to enforce that. And it's not going to be enforced because there's some mixed up thing and some paperwork I signed in 2004. And I haven't even been able to find a lawyer to take my money to try to fix this mix up without giving the guy my name, my address, and my phone number. He knows my name. My address, my phone number, my bank account number. Which they try to tell me I need to give him all that information. I don't want to give him that. I don't want to give him my address. It's not worth the $300 for two children that, you know, two, $300 period is what they, they were supposed to get. And that was for two children. It's like, and you just have to, you know, I don't know. So God is telling me, you got to do your work. This is not traditional and you don't know any graduate student. You don't know any, you don't even know any nurses. He's telling me this. You don't know nurses. You don't know doctors. You don't know lawyers. You don't know anyone in grad school, the people that go to all these different schools, like, oh, I'm an undergrad. I don't have a problem. They actually make fun of undergrad. They make fun of college and say, you think you're going to go into some liberal place and learn about, you know, um, stop it, a sort of cre creationalism. Um, evolution, you're going to learn all this stuff, and your professors are going to tell you to go, you know, go watch some pornographic movie for your report, and you're going to be like, oh, this is normal, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, if God tells you to go to school to be a doctor so you can help a bunch of people and actually earn enough money that you can actually pay your rent and pay for your kids' college and not be in debt and not be on welfare and not be on food stamps and give back to communities and tithe, I feel like if that's God's will, then you need to do it and not be, to not be told that you're bad because you have a higher education and that you take science classes. So right now God's telling me just, just keep going to church. It's like a job. It's not traditional. They're going to call in or someone's going to ask, why weren't you here? Like, oh my gosh, because I was at home freaking out about a bunch of tests I had. So I have two tests this week and a paper due and I have a book report due. Then I have like three clinic shifts and then and one of them is on Saturday. So I can't even do anything with the kids. I go camping or anything. And I hope they don't put an inspection notice on my door tomorrow. I am going to be like, oh, I'm seriously going to hire somebody to come over here. <laughs> But I'm, I'm at the point right now where I should probably clean up. God's like, you don't need to do that. You need to do, keep all your work done. So it's like the whole point of the story that was supposed to be five minutes was it's not traditional to be a single parent as a Christian who goes to church, who used to go regularly, who has a lot of Sunday classes, has a lot of Saturday classes, who has a lot of seven days a week for up to 21 to 28 days in a row or for nine weeks in a row, nine, ten weeks in a row, seven days a week. That is a lot. Or even six days a week for t for 10 to 12 weeks and then and then have like one week where you don't have weekend classes and then have another two months of class six to seven days a week that is way too much that is way too, I don't know anyone who works or goes to school as much as I do without days off occasionally there's one day off here and there very sparse and they're not two days in a row I haven't had two days off in a row and I don't even know how long So at this point in time, I just want to say that I 
I have, besides being treated like an adult, a child, God had revealed to me, you need to stand up and know that you pray and that you seek me and that you read the Bible every day and that you play your Christian music and that you you ask God for or ask for forgiveness. And also, he's like, if you ask me every morning to guide you, don't feel guilty about the path I took you on. He says, you're being treated like a child and you're accepting this behavior from people that are only a few years older than you. And you need to learn to act like an adult. Just because you're a single person, you know, sometimes I look older than I look, than I, sometimes I look older than my age, sometimes I look younger than my age. You know, I have different interests, different music than anyone I know. I don't know anyone who likes the type of music I like or the type of games that I like or like working out on weed or, you know, different cute things about animals. Nobody I know likes that kind of stuff. It's weird. I feel like stranger in strange land or whatever. But God is like, if, if I tell you that you have to, you need to take care of your family, you need to take care of your kids, your kids, there's something really going on, messed up with them. We're isolated. We don't have friends or relatives. We, we aren't close to our church. People are not able to. They're like, oh, if you live close, we'd actually help you. You hear that all the time. It's like, but you're, you're, you and your husband come by my house like five, five days a week. You're like, literally, within five minutes of my house. On, like, you, like weekly for the whole year, for decades. Like, I live seven minutes away from where you drive by every day, or five minutes away from where you drive, or you go right past my house. And they were telling me, you live too far. Why don't you stop over for tea or something? Like, it doesn't have to be like, help, 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 this poor lady. It's like, why can't I just be on the same level and be friends and buddies and pray with each other? So God was like, you need to do what you need to do to be a responsible parent. You need to do what you need to do to pay your rent. Because there is no one else that's going to pay it. You know? There, you know... There's no one that's going to take my car in for oil change. If I had a butler or something, they could do all that. And a, someone who could do my checking accounts and all that, fine. But I don't have that. And I'm borrowing money just to live. And I wish I had that stuff. I feel like if anyone needs help and a nanny and all that stuff, I need, I need that help. But I want to live in a house with horses so my kids could go outside and ride horses in the woods and not to worry about getting hit in the head with a football or being cussed at by the neighbors or being have garbage and rocks thrown at you, which happens to me. I don't like it. Or nails. And people throw nails at people. Cars and stuff. Where I live. <clears throat> so it's like, God's telling me, you need to do your work. It is abnormal. There's a lot of comments going around. Nobody understands. So they're going to speculate and be like, oh, they're just like everyone else. They're skipping out because they got angry about one thing. And they decided that they're not going to go to church anymore. That's not me. That's me sitting in class at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock on a Sunday morning being like, this sucks, dude. Like, in order for me to get through this five years, I have to be done. And God's like, in a few years or in a year when you have your schedule set, you will be able to make your schedule around your church. And prayfully consider what other options there are. Because God might have me travel or do this or do that. So there's going to be different things that God leads me to that doesn't match up with, with any human. doesn't matter what their faith. Someone could be telling me the wrong thing. And a lot of people get told the wrong thing and devastating things happen to their family. And I am trying to block that and just do God's will, period. Because that trumps everything to an exponential amount. So right now I have to get off here and do my work. Like I said, it is very scary for me to feel all this guilt and feel like I am ruining my kids' lives in that their parenting is like, why not? people are like, why don't your kids do this, that, and the other? Blah, blah, blah. Or why don't your kids go to birthday parties? And it's like, my kids aren't invited. It's like, finally got invited to one, they're just like, we don't want to do laser talk. Maybe they don't want to shoot guns at people. And it's like, I've been told how horrible a parent I am, and I'm just like, oh my gosh. I'm on survival mode all the time. Between getting places seven days a week, driving around, almost running out of gas, because I'm like, so go, 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 I didn't even look, I didn't even glance at the gas gauge, which I'm typically good at getting gas at half tank, from gaining a bunch of weight due to stress. From having a pet that needs to be cared for, a long hair guinea pig that needs his hair cut and combed and never, his nails trimmed, from having inspections all the time, from having, you know, and when you go to school seven days a week and you have 13 hour days, you still have to come home and study because it's like, boom, tomorrow at 7.30, you have another quiz. And if you fail one quiz, like you get a zero on it, you're most likely going to get, have to remediate the class or you're going to fail. You know, maybe you can get away with that once, but you're not going to be able to be absent or anything. 
because that's going to be your one time. You know, nowadays they stopped even throwing out your lowest score. You used to throw out your lowest score. So if you bombed something one day because you decided I would take my kid to the movie instead of... But nowadays it's like every score counts and you've got like five questions, all that, four questions on the test. You can't even get one wrong. I think maybe you can get one wrong. Yeah, you can get one wrong. Get a 75, I guess. You get two wrong, you got an F. Really bad F, too. So I just wanted to say that I am not trying to say anything against anyone's faith or anyone's place of worship. I just feel that I have wanted to express how I felt feelings. Nobody's made me feel guilty. The things they say, the reason I have a problem with it is because I memorize it and I replay it over my head and I sit here crying and doing this work and, and ha you know, have an exam tomorrow at 8.30 in the morning on 11 questions. That means I think you can miss like two. Like, I do my math. You can miss like three maybe and still pass the class. But it's like, I don't know. I, after being in the class, I have so many packs, like a big old notebook I have to finish reading tonight. But God's like, if you don't pass your boards, you're not gonna, you're gonna have to pay another $450. You're gonna have to spend another six months studying where it's all you do, blinders on, kids too bad. I wish I'd go to the park or the amusement park or to the pool. Maybe once every six months, I'll go do some, one thing. When you go to the park, when you go to the pool. Because one doesn't like chlorine, one doesn't like the park. So it's like, I don't want to be that type of parent. I want to get it done and checked off my list. I have a lot of obligations this year, and I want these tests done. I don't think, I think that if anyone has a dream, it doesn't matter if you're a parent or not, there's a lot of things with your goals that are difficult, and that's why everyone is not doing your dream. <laughs> And that's why a lot of people procrastinate their dream. I look on Facebook, I'll say this and I'll end, and there was a lot of people from my um, high school and stuff, and they have like houses and, and chickens and dogs, and they're having family events, and they have like jobs or jobs they could stay home with their kids during the summer, and they have like big old houses and nice cars, and it's like, oh, and they're out on boats. And going on vacation all the time, like, oh, too bad to go back to work in a month. And it's like, oh, I wish, I wish sometimes I just didn't have all these goals. I wish that at my age I could be comfortable with what I'm doing and have an income. And most of the families I see on there are two, one or two income families. So if a lady is having a bunch of kids, she's able to, I mean, this is not everyone, but sometimes they're able to spend a lot more time with the kids going to get them school clothes and get their hair done and all this stuff. And I have been on survival mode since I left my ex. I've been on survival mode before I left my ex-husband. And so it's like, I feel like if I were, I want to say this, I know I keep saying, if I, if I were a minister, <clears throat> I wouldn't want to make fun of somebody for going to school to be a doctor or for going to school to do their dream or their God God path. If I was a minister, I would not want to tell someone how horrible a parent they are, especially when they're in a situation where they are single and they are struggling to even make it a day and keep their kids' mouths fed. You know, from going from digging out pocket chains in the back of the car seat for gas. Here's 70 cents for gas. That's all I want, 70, like 70 cents. Yeah, and please keep the cap on tightly so I don't want to lose any fumes. That's how I was a few years ago. And my parents didn't raise me this way. If I was a preacher or something, I, I wouldn't want to make fun of families because of divorce or because there's a single parent, male or female circumstances. Someone could have died in my family if I had stayed with my ex. But I shouldn't be like, oh, because you were stupid when you were 20 and married some guy. Like, I didn't marry... The person changed when I got married. From the day I got married, this guy turned into a monster. I am not... I, like, tried... I was in the, living in a tent in the middle of Arkansas for, like, a, couple, a week. I tried to walk away because I was freaked out about this guy. And I, where was I going to go? In the middle of the sticks. I don't even know. The nearest town could have been 200 miles away for all I know, where we were. And I tried to walk away with my dog, and my dog is like, where are we going on adventure? And then we, like, kept walking, and my dog is like, see ya, I'm going back to the camp. At least there's a campfire and a, a guy that can help us in case there's coyotes or snakes or you know, stuff, flat tires, whatever. He turned into a monster. I did not know it was going to be like that. And I had to flee, literally flee, and go into hiding. 
to get away from him with my kids and just be like, I was working like three hours a week and I just really had to have faith in God. So it's really hard when people talk about how horrible a parent you are, you messed up because you made these decisions because you didn't know what you're doing when you're a kid and they are so perfect they did. It just hurts my heart and it makes me sad and it's hard for my kids to even hear the same messages because it's like, we just feel like there's something wrong with us and we hear pastors say, turn your mess into a message. And it's like, I want to turn my mess into a message. I had volunteered to do youth programs, and I wanted volunteered to do some prevention programs and some reality facts, you know, about sexually transmitted diseases or premarital sex, like staying away from drugs and how addictive they are, like other things. It's like, I wasn't allowed to do any of this. I wasn't allowed to be a leader. And I just, I was just... I could say I was just on fire for reading the word, sharing the word. You know, me and my kids would be late for church because we were praying and reading the word for an hour and a half. And it's like, holy cow, we got 10 minutes to get there. Oh my gosh, throw some clothes on and some shoes and get like I wasn't just slacking off. People were like, you need to wake up. Or I was like, I've been up since 6, since 5 this morning, praying and, and singing gospel hymns and getting the kids all psyched up, and it's like, I was sucked into, like, a spiritual cloud where I didn't care about time, and people are just, like, so, say so many mean things to me about how I don't know anything, and I believe this stuff, and I just, I don't know anything, I am not, like, I'm not Jesus, I am not God, I am a human being who makes all the mistakes, and I, my heart hurts when I feel guilty and a part of the guilt is not anything that God revealed to me or the Bible's revealed to me. The guilt comes from what other people said to me, either indirectly or directly. That, me, that is no connection whatsoever with the Bible. Because I have read the Bible. I will tell you the truth. I didn't finish finish reading the, New, the Old Testament straight through. But I read, I read most of it straight through. From Genesis chapter 1 through... And then a few of them I read out of context, and I'm trying to read them word for word, beginning to end. Um, but it's like, every time I look something up, people tell me that something's not biblical that I said. I just spent three weeks studying that. And I didn't just use one Bible. I used the NIV, I used the King James, the New King James, you know? And it's like, I just, I even get on there, I even look at it in Russian, in German, because it's interesting to me. I haven't quite done the Chinese and all that yet, but it has all my to-do lists. I'll get online and look at it in different languages just because I want to see what words I can recognize. But realistically, studying it, I study it, I pray about it, and I don't want the guilt in the words that people say, leaders say to me to make me feel like I am not going to be accepted in this faith and that God hates my guts. And that, that I put those words into my own mouth. Nobody said those words to me. But I just want to say... That I gotta stay, God's telling me stand up for what I know is right. And don't let those people defeat me. Don't let those lies of the devil defeat me. And just really just persevere through all of this, all of this, everything. Because each day is a gift from God. And each child we can see the smile on their face, even if they're not smiling, is a gift from God. Each pet that like sits there so obediently and faithfully is a gift from God. Even if it's a goldfish. I had a goldfish be faithful pets. God has created that and God has used that to bring joy. And just because sometimes I get carried away with what if this happens? What if there's a volcano? What if there's an earthquake? Maybe it's because the Bible talks about those storms getting worse and maybe I'm just being biblical or not a crazy person. So right now I'm going to get off here. I've got, I'm seriously, I've got eight hours left to study for two exams God help me seriously and I do not I love everyone in my church and the reason I'm crying is because I miss going and I miss being outside with them enjoying things and having games and going swimming I am heart my heart feels like it's cracked open and dumping out onto the ground and my carpet's dirty so it's getting filthy maybe I should vacuum maybe that should be my my release of stress. So I just wanted to say that I love them all. The devil will put 
make me try to be angry at everyone. But I felt that I needed to speak what God said about things that are not understood fully, and especially in certain neighborhoods or certain, I don't know, different people and different different jobs and different things. It's different and sometimes people don't understand at all and they don't want to understand or they don't know how to understand or they're too tired dealing with their own stuff. Because, you know, people are not just sitting there at the church. Some church, some, you know, the movies in the Catholic church, the priest lives right next door and he's just there all, you know, 24 hours a day, right awake, lighting candles. And like, that was what I see on TV. But nowadays people have lives and people go on trips and people have illnesses and their kids break their arms and they buy houses and they go on vacation and I already said that. So right now I want to say I love everyone. Um, even if they're mean, I'll forgive them. I don't have to be around them. If I learn my lesson, if they are mean to me, I need to stay away. But God's like, you need to stay away from that toxic toxicity. You need to eat the healthy foods that you know are healthy. Why go away from what you know is the truth? And God especially said, grow up. And this is hard to hear. Grow up. Don't let these people put you on a glass ceiling and say that you're like a child. And don't let yourself say that you're like a child because of the past. But allow yourself, as an adult who has kids, a kid that's about to be in driver's ed in a year, to just... No, nobody has come over to the house and sat down and been like, all right, this is what you need to do on Monday. This is what you do. No. I mean, people have told me that, my friends, but forget about them. That's just a study schedule. But nobody's telling me, okay, you need to pay your bills, and you need to clean your fridge, and you need to cut your... I have figured that stuff out on my own, and I need, to re I need to let myself know that I am an adult and that I have been living, especially since I left my ex nine, over nine years ago, that I have been keeping everything in order. Not the perfect order like I want it to be because I'm like a perfectionist, but it's been in order, and it's getting better, and if I have faith, it will be even better, even faster. So I will tell you on accountability, right now, I will pass this board exam this time around. I will get, like my dentist, 90%. I am going, I need to know 200 things really well right now. And I have a whole 8 hours to, to know 800 things, or 800, 200 things really well. And God help me to be directed to exactly what I need to know exactly the spellings there's not going to be any you know hmg coa reductase versus synthase reductase is the one that actually synthesizes 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 <laughs> cholesterol you know that you know what the other one means that's all i have so much for five minutes